Hey, welcome back, guys. So, moving along with the uh, some of these antenna videos, I figured a really good video to make would be how do I actually test them to know if I'm making a good antenna or if I'm making pure junk. I will go ahead and say that uh, I am showing you the method that I use to that I go about to find out what I'm doing good and what I'm doing bad. Normally, I go outside and I'm in an open field. I have the multi rotor and this Immersion RC RF power meter about 15 feet away from each other. I don't have uh, any trees near me, no buildings, nothing that the signal could bounce off of. So, being indoors, this, this is the wor absolute worst place to test your antennas. Uh, I'm in a small room, everything is bouncing off the walls. I have a, I've got an internet router about 8 feet away, my camera runs off of Wi Fi. Um, I've got my computer going, cell phone, a bunch of metallic objects, it's just horrible. So the readings that we see, just know they're not accurate. Not to mention I live in an uh, apartment complex and everyone else has Wi-Fi as well. And if you are interested in uh, purchasing one of these RF meters, then I'll leave some links for you in the description below. So the first thing I do is I take a known good antenna and you probably see these X's written on top of this cap. That tells me, no, do not put this on a multi-rotor because I want this thing to be in perfect mint condition as well as my two other antennas. I've got two more right here. Now this one is left hand polarized. Uh, you can use right hand, doesn't matter. I make all of my antennas in left hand just because all my friends use right hand. Uh, if you don't know, if you mix match the, your antennas left hand and right hand with other people flying near you, uh, you don't cut into each other's video as much. I feel like I explained that horrible. I don't actually mean if you have a, say, a left hand on your receiver and right hand on your video transmitter, uh, that's going to help. I don't mean that. I mean if you have both left hand or both right hand and then your friends use the other, then you won't be cutting into each other's video as much. So the next thing I will do is take another known good antenna and I will use a left hand as well and place this on my multi rotor. I'm going to turn my video transmitter on, take a step back, and this is going to give me a good baseline. So we'll say 28 dBm or 20, 27, 28 dBm. That's what store bought antennas that we know are accurate. So we are shooting for as close to 27 or 28 as possible. But the thing is, with homemade antennas, we're not machines that create these store bought antennas. So humans, it's really hard for us to get to be perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is take a right hand polarized antenna for another baseline because if you've ever mix matched your antennas with left hand and right hand, um, like I said, the purpose is so you don't interfere with other people's video as much, but it's not, it's not perfect at all. As a matter of fact, uh, if I'm in a sticky situation and I run out of antennas, I can throw a right hand on my video transmitter or receiver with a left hand on the other, and you still get video. It's not as good, but it's still there. But the purpose of doing this is to uh, get the second baseline of like whenever I make antennas, I don't want to go past this DB, uh, this DBM. So now turning it on, stepping back. So the first reading was uh, what 27 or 28, and now we're looking at we'll we'll just call it 40 even. Just to clarify what I mean, because we had two of the same antennas getting a reading of 27, which by the way, the lower the number, the better and then I mix match the antennas and I got a reading of 40. Uh, if you've ever mix match antennas, like I said, you can get video but it's not that great. So I don't even want to be close to that reading. So I will take a number in between those two, which would be about 33 or 34. So if any of the antennas I test go above 33 or 34, I will consider that antenna a fail. Now, uh, I, whenever I make my antennas, I keep numbers on them. Well, not so much the clever leafs, it's just the ones where I make crazy designs and I'm trying to figure out, uh, I'm trying to perfect them. But I, I do it with my clever leafs as well because I'm always on this quest of perfecting my antennas, making them the best I can. So I, I place numbers on these. Then I have a notepad on my computer. And on my computer, I type in what type of antenna I made. Uh, the length of wire that I use because sometimes I go longer or shorter because that will affect it. I uh, also uh, put in at 
what measurement I made my bends, if I used any uh, putty on the end or not, if I'm making something crazy like this, then I also put in the length from the top to the bottom, and any other notes. So whenever I test these, I log what uh, DBM I got, whether it failed or passed the test, and once I do this with all my antennas, I can go back and review this and figure out which one performed the best and what did I do to make that one perform the best. And then I will continue going on and on, uh, trying to, perf to perfect them even more. So let's start off with a clover leaf. Remember, we're shooting for 27 or 28. And we're sitting at about 30, 31. So that's not too bad. Let's try another one. And this time we are even lower, about 25 or 26, which theoretically means that I made an antenna better than a store-bought one. But like I said, uh, we're indoors and these readings are not going to be accurate whatsoever. So I highly doubt that's true. I would have to go outside and do a real test to see if that is true or not. Okay, doing another clever leaf, And we're sitting at 25, 26 again. So regardless if this reading is right or not, I have a pretty good feeling that these are going to be really good antennas. Now, another design that I've been messing with is, you see, I, I don't mind making the clever leaves. It's just that they take forever to make, trying to get everything perfect and symmetrical. Also, they take damage very easy. These things bend like none other. Uh, so they don't really last that long. I've been trying to design an antenna that doesn't take as much damage, it doesn't take as much uh, material, so it's even cheaper to make, and it's even faster to make. So something that's better all around than a clover leaf. Now that's uh, it's not going to happen because, well, for certain situations, because uh, different antenna designs have different characteristics. Some have further range than others. Some have more penetration than others. Different antenna designs are like different personalities. Um, some are better than others at certain things. And we're sitting at about 30, 31 on that one, which isn't too bad. Let's try another one of those. Even better. Say, what, 26, 27? Not bad at all. Now those two were some of my most recent revisions. Let me show you what a bad antenna looks like. Uh, let's try this one. I tried making a similar design but with three wires instead of one. Which I'm not too crazy about anyway because it takes even longer. Uh, and matter of fact, it takes just about the same amount of time as a clover leaf. So I'm not too crazy about this design anyway. That's why I haven't been trying to perfect it. And we're sitting at about 39, so I would consider that a fail. At that point, I would uh, just clip the end off and remake it. I would leave the rest alone, just so I don't have to put another connector on it. Let's try this one where I placed two of these wires on. This was also one of my early designs, so I have a feeling it's going to fail as well. Yeah, that one's about the same, so I would consider that one a fail. And like I said, normally I would take these numbers and go back to my notepad where I have everything saved and log what I probably did wrong and try to perfect on one that actually scored really good. Now let's try a horrible one, which is, I already know it's going to be this one. Uh, this was the very first one of this type that I made. I really haven't been crazy about perfecting it because it's not really considered a uh, circular polarized antenna. I guess it'd be closer to a linear and it, it takes about just as much time to make as a clover leaf. Yeah, so that one's over 40. It's definitely a fell. And that's really all there is to it. Um, I have even more than that. I just make antennas like crazy because it's just so cheap to make them. I know people will say, well, why don't you just buy store-bought antennas and not have to deal with this? I don't know. Why do you build your own multi-rotor? Why don't you just buy a multi-rotor already made? Uh, I guess everyone's different. Also, really just like saving money because I'm telling you, it is so cheap to make these things. The most expensive part are the SMA connectors, but they're reusable. So once you buy, say, 20 of those, then you'll never have to buy another again. 
really after that it's just coax and copper wire and that costs next to nothing but if you don't want to purchase one of these meters another way of doing it is just trial and error make a bunch of antennas put some numbers on it take a you know pen and piece of paper go out and fly try them all out and then log you know what you notice record which ones work well which ones don't and then take note at what you did on the good ones and try to perfect it even more if this video helped you out could you please give me a like and uh, look in the description below for links to other playlists and videos as well as uh, some links to this meter thanks for watching and I will see you again soon